I am Gabby Charles, Civic Engagement Manager here with SOC. And I want to remind you that we are still working from home. Uh, so we can't serve you in person, but in other ways. You can call us 647-8090. You can send an email, SOC at SOCMilwaukee.org. You can always visit our website, uh, SOCMilwaukee.org. Also, a reminder, we have our survey. We always ask you guys to fill it out. And just let us know what you want to hear, what you want to see, what we should change. We really just want to know what you guys think. Let us know what's been useful and what we should change. Like I mentioned, all of us are working from home and that is why you don't see me wearing a mask. But we are following the order to wear masks, especially if you're working near other people. always uh, need to mention our legal disclaimer. All of the opinions and points of view uh, shared on the program are not necessarily those of SOC. So this week we're going to be talking about Ingrid Fernandez from the Mexican consulate here in Milwaukee. We're also going to be talking with, sorry, uh, tomorrow, Thursday, we're going to talk to Paul Krupski from the health department. And then Friday, we're going to talk to Jennifer Morales. She was the first director of the school commission. And then also Dr. Tatiana Joseph. She was the second Latina elected uh, to the school commission board. Also, I want to let you know, Friday, we're going to have a vigil for Mr. Jason Clearman. He was a victim of a shooting last week. So that will be this Friday, October 2nd, 630 at, in Walker's Square Park. There's different options for ways to participate. You can participate in person obviously using social distance and masks. There's also a car caravan. To do that, just communicate with Clarissa. Uh, her information is all on the screen. Clary at sockmilwaukee.org. And then also her phone number is 414-301-2644. And then there will also be a virtual option. And then also, oh. and then there's another way that you can take action. There's a call to action, a community call to action in honor of Jason. So communicate with SOC, SOC at SOCMilwaukee.org. Um, you can join your resident association or start one if you don't have one in your neighborhood. Um, you can also be a volunteer for the agricultural market in Walker Square. You can help with a monument in Walker Square Park. You can help or be a volunteer for immigration reform. Um, or you can also turn into an apiculteur for the helping the crisis of the bees or become a gardener. So those are all things that you can do on Friday as well. So with that, I want to invite Ingrid Fernandez from the Mexican consulate here in Milwaukee and she'll tell us a little bit about what's happening. Hello, Ingrid, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you? I'm very good, thank God. Thank you so much for being here with us, for taking the time to give us an update. 
before all of that, can you just tell us a little bit about you and about your role with the consulate? Of course. I am Ingrid Fernandez, and I am a protection consult for legal points here at the consulate in Milwaukee, the Mexican consulate in Milwaukee. The consulate opened their services in 2010 here in Milwaukee. And we, they all have a protection department and, and that's what I supervise. And about the, other than the protection, what other services do the consulate offer? Well, the primary purposes, like a lot of people already know, is to turn in documentation or um, identification documents for all Mexicans. In this case, the state of Wisconsin and then some county, counties from the upper peninsula of Michigan. So the documents, we will accept our passports and we help obtain our passports. And then also what's known as the um, voting identification. It's it's a ID card. And then we also offer any Mexican that needs a birth certificate. Like I was born in the city of Mexico, Mexico City, and I don't have an original certified copy of my birth certificate. So I would go to the consulate and that uh, that's where I could get a copy. You can also get other kinds of um, certificates from the register, civil register, a marriage certificate, um, or a death certificate as well. So there are, uh, maybe uh, a lot of people already know, that there are, with, you know, all the modern technology stuff, a lot of these, they're all, a lot of it is online or digital. So lots of the certificates that the registers offer are digital. So. In the moment when I come to the consulate from whatever state, Guerrero, Oaxaca, Pueblo, Mexico City, normally all the documents are digitally there and then you can obtain it. But it does happen that they're not there because it's not, you know, some places aren't completely digital. Um, but then it's just a question of communicating with them and asking them to send up the documents. So then the person that needs them can pick them up from the consulate. You can also get a uh, credential to vote in Mexico. We, do, we don't, the consulate doesn't give a credential to vote. Um, but people can come to the consulate, present certain documents, register, in the, the list of voters, as it's called, and then they'll send your credential for voting to your address. You can also get uh, no, notaries, like copies notarized. So those are certain copies that have legal validity in Mexico. So let's say I can't go to Mexico, but I need my family member in Mexico to send sell some land that I have over there. So I could go to the consulate and have a notarized letter so that somebody in Mexico represents me. And I specifically name who that is and send the document. So normally those documents are made in Mexico. And the public notaries there, uh, and, and in Mexico, those are lawyers. Here in Milwaukee, all of the consuls have the power to make a notary. So then you can also 
um, be have witnesses. It usually in Mexico, those are done at a public notary, but those are just a few of the services as far as documentation that we offer at the consulate. There is another area in the consulate. Um, it's called community. It's a little bit a little bit like in here in the United States, it's called outreach. So that's about health, education. This Friday, if you look on our Facebook, we're promoting what our National Health Week. So we have different information about health. We also have different events throughout the year, um, financial education. Um, adult education, education for kids, obviously. And then this, like I said, this week uh, or October, as we're doing health, the other department is us, protection. Protection means legal, legal points. So any Mexican that has a legal situation in this country comes to the consulate to get our attention. You don't need an appointment. We're here from eight o'clock in the morning. You tell the person that's at the door, the security, that you come for the Department of Protection and you let them know, is it in criminal or immigration or custody? Those are all currently things that we see very frequently. It's lots of times, you know, custody, clearing up who's the father. We also have work matters. The last week in September, we had a lot of um, talk the last week of September about labor rights. Um, so talking to the community, information about certain subjects that can be helpful. So talking about labor matters. We talk a lot about uh, rights, especially at a federal and local level. And, you know, talking about contracts and um, we have an understanding between us and the federals to be able to explain everything um, so that everybody in Wisconsin understands. And then finally, labor. Oh, and there's also administrative themes or matters. So if someone passes away, a Mexican, and his wish was to go back to Mexico, you can come to the consulate, the Department of Protection, talk to us, we'll find out the documents that are necessary, what are the requirements, and we will help so that you can take the remains back to Mexico. And then of course, right now, uh, talking about the pandemic, COVID-19, everything is more complicated because if I already, somebody passed away, it could have been because of the virus. So they have to verify and, and we will help uh, that the state where they going, that the remains are going, you know, from somebody that has uh, passed away from the virus, which is obviously contagious, not all states are receiving uh, remains. So those are a few things that we can help you with. And we are here to offer information. You can give us a call anytime. We do have an emergency line. We obviously also have office hours, but if there's an emergency, the protection department is also available to help you know, if there's like a immigration detention, somebody needs a lawyer. Or if there's any legal matters in Mexico and you don't know how to do it because maybe because of your immigration status, you can't go back to Mexico. We can help, you know, guide you. It can be a little complicated. So generally... I think that's about everything that we offer. Wow, it's an 
innumerable all of the services. Thank you so much for all of that information. We really need all that. And it's super interesting to know about all of the activities that are coming. Super interesting. I know you mix in um, about some updates, but what other updates do you have for people? Well, any information that we receive, we get it from Washington and then our, our offices in Mexico. But there's obviously different organizations and lawyers that work with us at the state level and at a national level and, and an international level. And we always try to put that information in your hands. And obviously we can't have a lot of people here because usually we have information meetings here at the consulate. Um, you know, organizations like yours could come, but we now are using social, you know, Facebook. On our Facebook page, we do have images that are constantly being uh, updated and posted so that you can see what is the update about different um, subjects. So today, talking about protection, we put an image about using a visa. I have a tourist visa. It's a simple image. And if I have any questions, this is the phone number to call. And that way we can help you. Talking about immigration matters, maybe some people that are watching know that Immigration Services has announced an increase in fees, a big increase in fees. So even now choosing to, to um, charge for things that used to be free. So now they're trying to do a memorandum, a judge for immigration services. So this change of fees was going to take place on the second Friday, but this order from this judge maybe 15 hours ago was just started. It stops that change. Even the memorandum, they wanted to change waivers for some immigration um, transactions. But this order from the judge stops all that. So what I recommend is if you have a matter in process, or if you're thinking about doing something, contact your lawyer so that you can take full advantage that everything is stopped. Do it as soon as you can, because everything changes constantly. So you have to take advantage uh, of these doors that are currently open. And if you have a doubt or, you know, maybe something wasn't fair because you weren't sure about the changes that were coming up or the conditions, now is the time. If you want to call us, um, we can explain it to you. Or like I said, if you have a lawyer that is already taking care of your case, contact your lawyer. Um, it's super important that you don't wait because more changes make it more complicated. And, and make sure you're working with somebody that does know, because that's another situation. So many changes. There can easily be confusion, even within professionals. We are Mexicans, just like the people that come to race to receive services. So it's important to come to us because the only thing we want to do is help. And we try to have all of the information updated the best that we can so that you guys can have the best information. You know, you guys being the people that come for services. If you have a lawyer, make sure it's a good lawyer with a good relationship by the bar of lawyers. We can also help with that information to avoid fraud, to avoid that you pay money, way too much money for services that, that aren't good or for bad information. So that's why we're here 
to help uh, help you, to educate you. You just need to communicate with us. Very good. And to get the documents, like you said, at the consulate or for the other services uh, of protection, is there any cost for these services? No, protection does not have any cost. Um, like I said, the, the remains, uh, if you're trying to do that, there is no cost for our services. If I come to update my passport or my voting card, there are fees for that. But just to, so to get a document, yes, there's a, there's cost. There's a law in Mexico that says that there is a fee for a certain document of a passport, you know, for however many years. Um, also your birth certificate, you know, there is a cost, but that you pay here at the consulate. You make the appointment through a program called Mexite, and that's where you also make your appointment to bring in your documentation. The day of your appointment at the um, cashier, you pay here in cash, and that same day, in 40 minutes, you get your documents. It's a very simple process. If everything is in order, if you meet all of the requirements, it's super simple, and in a few minutes, you should have it. Um, obviously because of coronavirus, we've been spreading out the appointments because we want less people in the consulate in the actual building. But protection, no, we don't, our, our department doesn't have any costs. We don't need a, a, an appointment either. So any legal matters, we are here to serve you. And where can you be found? Where's your office found? And how do we communicate with you guys? What's your phone number or email or? Yeah, of course. We are at 1423 North Prospect Avenue. That's on the east side. A little east of downtown. I think our Facebook address is up there. So 414-944-7590. There's also the emergency phone number, 414-324-7686, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So obviously if there's an emergency. Also, there is um, a website. That, oh, there's our emergency numbers. You can see everything in the comments. Um, those are all really good resources, especially for, but th there's another service that we do here on protection. If you're looking for a family member, somebody that was, you know, coming over and you, you haven't heard from them, we can get together with the other consulates in the other states to try and find this person. And obviously, Facebook, just put Consulado Mexicano Milwaukee in Facebook. And you'll find all of our contact information, our address, our hours. We do have a mobile consulate. Maybe you guys have heard about it. And we go to certain cities where we know there is a, a large Mexican population or, you know, a community of Mexicans like Madison, Green Bay, Wausau. So we'll go, you know, we have a calendar all year long and it's a mobile consulate. So it'll go and we'll offer those same services for passports, um, birth certificates, Obviously, we're more restricted now. We've had to reschedule a few of them because of the pandemic. But we're getting back into it now. And last weekend, we were in, uh, we had a mobile, go a mobile unit. And then I think on October 24th, we'll be doing it again. If the situation doesn't change with the pandemic, we'll be in Green Bay. Very good. Well, thank you so much for all of your information, Ingrid. I don't know if you have a, a last message that you want to give to folks. 
Well, the recommendation um, from protection is we always repeat, do not forget you are in a foreign country. Laws are different. Culture is different. So we have to follow the law that is in this country. So if any problem with the law, any immigration problems, it's so important that you keep that in mind. Things are different here. And any situation that arises, don't, um, don't not go to court. Do not stop attending to your legal matters because here, that's how the consequences get worse. If you have any doubts about anything that I'm saying, we are here to serve you in the protection department and then we can just inform you more. Very good. Thank you so much for this message and for all of the information about the different services and everything that the consulate does. We hope to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Take care. You too. See you later. So now let's see who's saying hi. Well, hello, Daniela. Hello, Getzabel. Hello, Alan. Thank you guys for saying hi. Thanks for the love and the likes and the hearts. Keep putting the comments in. We love seeing them. So now let's watch a video that Marlene prepared, our coordinator for coronavirus. Always use a mask. If you interact with people, limp, clean your workstation as often as possible. Wash your hands with water and soap as often as you can. Take your personal belongings, like your cell phone, your keys, away from your work area. When you get home, change your clothes and shower before seeing your family. Don't go to work if you're sick. If you have any symptom or you think that you've been exposed, get a test. Take care of yourself. Your family's future is better with you. Very good information that the video had about protecting yourself at work. I think that my connection is a little slow. I hope that you can hear me, even though my image is a little blurry. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to share a video that I prepared that explains a little bit about um, the absentee ballot and what comes in the envelope that you're receiving uh, for those of you that have requested it. Hello, good afternoon. I know that a lot of you are receiving your absentee ballots. Comes home to your home in an envelope like this. And I just want to take a minute to explain what contain what's inside of the envelope. And then explain how you guys, how you guys can successfully vote. We want your vote to count. So you're going to open up your envelope, it comes to your house, and you'll see another envelope. This is the official envelope where you are going to put your um, um, ballot after filling in the little circles with black ink. So then you'll see two papers. And those have instructions, one in English, one in Spanish. Thank goodness, in English and in Spanish. So the most important in the instructions is where it explains that you need to verify that the address and all of the information that is in the um, official envelope, verify that that information is correct. Also explains how to fill out um, black ink, no errors, and then, it explains that you, as a voter, 
need to sign right here at this yellow spot with the date. And then your witness signs here and they have to put their address. You need to put an address. And the address needs to be an 18 year old or older citizen. And then lastly, you actually get your ballot. So then we'll see. That way you can see the little circles, what they look like. Look right here, these little circles. So then you'll see the people, president, vice president, and the options. And you have to fill in the little circle with black ink. Then you just fold it all up, put it in the envelope, in front of your witness, of course, right? You'll seal it up, sign it, and then let that your witness sign also. Another thing that I wanted to explain, and the other side of the instructions, there's a list of places where you can turn in your uh, absentee ballot. Because we know that with how many um, absentee ballots have been requested, um, we know that we don't want there to be a delay in the mail. So if you can go and turn in your absentee ballot at one of these places that shows up on the list right here, it's much better if you can do it that way. If you can't, if you don't have the ability to do it that way, of course you can just turn it in traditionally but it is better to do it at one of the drop-off boxes, if you can. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, contact us. I'm always here to help any of you, to answer any of your questions. Thank you. So, any question, like I said, Just put a little comment. Now I'm gonna share a census video. Hey, do you know who I am? I'm all of the Latinos that live in this country. I'm all the men and all of the women and the kids. I'm a hard worker and the one that works double shifts, triple shifts. I'm those that work hard. I'm the one that came over and stayed and the one that was born here. And the one that was brought over when she was little to dream big. I am every Latino that matters in this country. Every 10 years, we get the opportunity to better our, clin our communities with clinics, schools, and other new businesses. A better future. All of your information is protected in the census. It's almost here. Form your future. Start here. So we're almost in our last day to complete the census. I know that there has been a lot of changes. There was that federal judge that said that they couldn't suspend the operations on the 30th of September, that they had to keep going, um, picking up, you know, all of the answers up until the 31st of October. But now the Office of the Census is saying that they're stopping on October 5th. So, yes, super confusing the situation. But we do know we have to fill out the census. Now, if you haven't done it, do it today because we don't know how much time we have left to fill it out. Also, I want to share an image with you guys. It shows which zones on the south side still do not have more than 40% of your censuses filled out. You can see it here between Lapham and Scott, 9th and 16th. And then that's the image up on the top. That area still does not have at least 40% completion rate of people that have 
responded to the census. And the same thing down on a little further south, Beecher, Lincoln, Muskego Avenue, and 16th Street. They still have not met 40% completion rate. So if you guys know people that live in this zone, in this area, well, I mean, obviously the entire south side, but especially in these two areas, it's super important that people live in these areas complete the census. So that we get the color to change. We want it from orange to yellow. We want at least 40% of folks complete the census. And of course, we're going to be sharing any updates that we get about the last date to fill out the census. But for now, they're telling us the 5th of October will be the last day. And then, oh, it, sorry. Now we're going to invite uh, Senor Martinez, I'm sorry, Mr. Martinez from the commercial corridor to talk to us about some updates that he has. Hello, how are you, Nathaniel? I can't hear you. I don't know if anybody else is having the same problem. Nope, still can't hear him. Well, let's work on that with Nathaniel. Hopefully we can bring him back. But for the meantime, we're going to share a video that promotes our survey. Has this forum been informative for you? What part of the forum can we better or change? Let us know by responding to a quick survey it can be found in the comment section. That way we can keep the program going for you residents and thank you for being with us. All right, let's see if Nathaniel is back. Let's see if we can hear him now. There you go. Hello, good afternoon, and thank you for your invitation. And now I can hear you. Perfect. I am completely in agreement with you. It is so important to fill out the census that affects all of the resources available for our community. It's so important that everybody is counted to be able to benefit, especially from all of those resources that our communities need. Well, my name is Nathaniel Martinez. I work for the city of Milwaukee in the commercial corridor. And today I'm gonna to present a little bit about Milwaukee Restart. It's a program that offers help to businesses that have suffered because of the pandemic during these hard times. So starting, you can find all of the information on Milwaukee, G-O-V slash restart. The, pro the program offers grants to help businesses uh, to buy PPE for their employees and for their clients. Offers also offer help for modifications to stop the spread of coronavirus within the business. Also uh, helps with inventory, rent, utilities. To be eligible, the business needs to be nonprofit and you have to be found in the city of Milwaukee. Super important, the city, not the county. The business needs to have been open before March 12th that made more than $0 and less than 12,000. 
and then um, a certain number of full-time employees. Um, in this first round, we hope to help uh, restaurants, clothing stores, professional services. Tomorrow, we're going to put up a link for people to fill out the web the application online, and it will be open. <coughs> excuse me, all the way um, one week to be able to fill it out. And then another change is that we'll have different groups that are available um, to help businesses fill out the applications or to, you know, scan documents if there is a needed for that. So also we can offer help in Spanish. So we have the Latino Entrepreneurial Network and Wisconsin Business Wibic, let's call it. You can find all of their websites and they can help you in Spanish and then obviously information about their different contact information and other services they offer. A uh, little tip for you guys to prepare is to go to the website, look at the documents that are needed to have everything together in the application. We're talking about a copy of your uh, taxes from the 2019 year, uh, one form of nine, oh, to, uh, form to report your employees, a W-9 form, a photo of the interior and exterior of your business. And then another one that's really important, it's important to have on hand is your DUNS number. There is a link, a link if you need to find your number or if you need a number, we can help you apply for a number. It's super important that you have that. And if you don't, well, I mean, we only have a week to apply, so we have to be um, fast. Also, uh, some time to answer the questions. If you want more information, you can always do that on our website. But yeah, I'm ready if you, anybody has any questions. Very good. I do have a question. Do you have to be a citizen to apply for this? That is not a requirement, but you do need your eligible business and all of the documents to fill out the um, application. Another question, is this for any kind of business? There's a lot that are eligible, but there is a section on the website that says which businesses are not eligible. So let me see if I go to the website. It's also in English and in Spanish. There's a little link in the upper, upper part of the website. It says click here, and that way it'll tell you where to go for Spanish. But businesses that are not eligible are um, franquicias. I'm not familiar with that term, but um, massage salons, uh, payday loans or car loans, tobacco stores, liquor stores, apartment buildings, or um, like property owners administration or like um, property management and then other personal ones like Uber, Lyft, renting. Um, if you have your own renting company, that's not eligible either. Another important thing is that the businesses that are based from home can still apply for up to $15,000. That is a change, but you also still have to follow all of the rules and the requirements for the program to be eligible. Any cost to apply? To apply? Nope. Everything is free to apply. Uh, the services from the groups that I mentioned that are offering help, those are free. Just go to their website, but it's all without any cost to you. Thank you so much for sharing all that information about the program. I know that lots of people are going to be able to benefit from this program. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. And good luck to everybody that's going to apply. 
If any questions show up, we will let you know. That way you can answer them. Thank you. Take care. Very, very good. Let me see if anybody else has said hi, if they've had questions. Esperanza, Carlos helping with audio, letting me know that they couldn't hear either in the beginning. But thank you, Stacy, for the question. Any other questions that you guys want to ask to Nathaniel or to Ingrid? Um, you can still ask your questions, and then we, as SOC, will be in communication with them. So tomorrow, we're going to have Paul Krupski from Health Services. Uh, we're going to be talking about overdoses. We're also going to talk to Jennifer Morales and Dr. Tatiana they were the first and the second Latinas or Latino Ajo X that have been elected to the school board. So be sure to turn in to get all of the information. Always remember that we are in solidarity to everybody that's protesting. Remember that our thoughts are with the people that have been affected by coronavirus, especially the people that have lost a, a loved one. Thank you so much. And I'm going to leave you guys with a video um, thanking our sponsors. Hello, SOC followers. I am Marisol Diaz, Communi Digital Communications Manager. We would like to thank everybody for, uh, for supporting our three o'clock with SOC show and for completing our census, or excuse me, our survey. We also want to thank all of our sponsors. Wisconsin Voices, Community Development Block Grants, Neil Philanthropy State Infrastructure Fund, Movement Voter Project, Catholic Campaign for Human Development, Zilber Foundation, City of Milwaukee Office of Violence Prevention, Tides Foundation, Employ Milwaukee, and all of the faithful people that have supported SAC through their personal donations. Thank you so much. <laughs>